let us discuss about sequence of numbers we define a sequence of numbers xn as any formula like this where this small n denotes the natural numbers there may be many more examples and so on we may have defining xn with trigonometric formula with all we should remember that this n is the natural number and this sequence of number helps us to define what is limit of a function okay which i said in the previous video just see that the sequence of number xn converges to a limit a whenever we have mod of xn minus l less than epsilon for all n greater than a prefixed large number capital n it means that this sequence of values x1 x2 x3 dot 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 x n x n plus 1 they move on and reaches this very large value capital m and then this type of numbers this is an unending value why because this n is the set of natural numbers which is actually 1 2 3 and it moves on 10 to the power 10 10 to the power 100 and so on up to the cardinality alif null so these numbers also move on but if this sequence is convergent it converges to a specific limit say l then we have xn minus l mod value less than epsilon for all n greater than a fixed large value capital n where this epsilon and capital n is arbitrary in what way in a way that this epsilon is let's assume to the tune of 10 to the power minus 3 then this m will be to the tune 10 to the power 5 say or 10 to the power 10 say and if you want this epsilon to be of the order 10 to the power minus 10 this then this m maybe will have to be like this let us explain it with a very specific example of the most effective and talked about sequence 1 by n. I would like to <coughs> request the viewer to think about these two sequence also. 
remember that n is the natural number positive integer so obviously you could easily appear that this is not defined because 1 by 0 is not defined but this is defined and this is also defined now what are the values the values go on like this isn't it so and in the hundredth term we have 1 by 100 then we have 1 by say 10 to the power 10 so obviously we can see that this sequence tends to the limit 0 why because after a particular value say 10 to the power 10 this is the large value the difference between 1 by 10 to the power 10 minus 0 its mod value is less than 10 to the power this is actually minus 10 to the power <coughs> minus 10 so we may take it like this isn't it so so for all the latter values all the values of n which is greater than this large value m we have this is to be true and this is a fairly this is actually termed a arbitrary small positive number arbitrary small positive number okay so this is the concept of sequence of real numbers and this sequence of real numbers have three properties monotonic monotonicity rather boundedness and convergence obviously whenever there is a sequence xn if we can say that xn plus 1 is always greater than xn or xn plus 1 is always less than xn for all n then this is monotonic increasing and this is monotonic decreasing we can easily apprehend what is boundedness if for any sequence xn we can say that all the values of xn is for all n for all n is very important here mod of xn is less than b then it is bounded and what is convergence convergence is that the values tend to a particular value after this n gets sufficiently large and this precisely takes us to the concept of limit of fx as x tends to a equal to l how let us see this very important concept which you would like to explain. Just see the, remember the epsilon delta definition of limit of a function fx as x tends to a. If it is l, we say that for all mod of x minus a less than delta, we must have mod of fx minus l less than epsilon, where this epsilon and delta are both positive and arbitrarily small arbitrarily small what does it mean it means that these delta and epsilon are small numbers what does this arbitrary word mean the ar word arbitrary means one can <coughs> think about delta to be of the order of 10 to the power minus 3 or 10 to the power minus 10 or 10 to the power minus 11 minus 100 
so there is no end to it isn't it so but more or less we can assume that they are all small number but this definition is true for any choice of this that is very important whether you choose this or this or this this is true all these are positive and may be taken as small number but this is much smaller than this and this is much much smaller than this but with the word arbitrarily small we mean that whatever be the value of epsilon and delta whenever mod of x minus a is less than delta to the tune of this mod of fx minus l must be less than epsilon where epsilon is smaller number to the tune of this not to the tune of this and whenever delta is small like this epsilon will be small like this this is a very important concept okay now this definition lends us to the concept of x belonging to the delta neighborhood of a and this will imply here we say that for all mod of x minus a less than delta we have mod of fx minus l less than epsilon that is the defi definition of limit of fx as x tends to a equal to l now what does this mean mod of x minus a less than delta we know that whenever x is greater than a mod of x minus a is plus x minus a and whenever x is less than a we have mod x minus x as a minus x and that is less than delta so this implies x is less than a plus delta while this imply x is we transpose x to this side and delta to this side and it gives x is greater than a minus delta so isn't does these two combined actually says that x lies between a minus delta and a plus delta if we put on the real line a so this is a minus delta and this is a plus delta just note that we have strictly less than and strictly greater than so this is the open interval isn't it so open interval a minus delta a plus delta denoted by this inequality for all the values of x which lies between a minus delta and a plus delta we must have what does this mean this does uh, this also actually means that fx is less than l plus epsilon and greater than l minus epsilon so for all x in this delta neighborhood of we have fx in epsilon neighborhood of epsilon neighborhood of l and that is precisely the definition of limit we can regenerate this with the concept of sequence of numbers see how we say that if fx tends to l as x tends to a this is equivalent in saying that we have a sequence xn which tends to a ensuring that the sequence fxn tends to l this is because what does this mean from the definition of convergence of sequence we know that this means whenever the sequence xn converges to a we have mod of xn minus a less than delta for all n greater than a p fixed large number m okay so for all this type of sequences we have f x n minus l less than epsilon the same m the 
the same way we prefer to write and what does this mean this means that fx tends to l as x tends to because mod of xn minus l than delta means for all xn which are in the delta neighborhood of it isn't it so all these xn's are in the delta neighborhood of l and all these fxn's are in epsilon neighborhood of l so they are equivalent and this can be explained by the <laughs> very basic sequence 1 by n again as we all know that the sequence 1 by n tends to 0 as n tends to infinity because n is the natural number and it goes on increasing and whenever this n goes on increasing taking the values of 1, 2, 3 and then 10 square then 10 to the power 100 the many numbers it becomes fairly large and then this value becomes fairly small and the difference between this and this is less than arbitrary small positive number Okay, so we can easily follow that this ensures that limit of 1 by x as x tends to infinity is 0. And with this concept, we move on to establish the so called density theorem. What is the density theorem? The density theorem states that if we have x greater than y for all real numbers x and y in R, we have where R is any rational actually any real number, rational number or irrational number, we have some r in between x and y. We prefer to write this as a rational number. So, the proof is like this, since x is greater than y, we have assumed, so x minus y is positive and whenever x, and x minus y is positive, we have some <coughs> natural number n, we have some natural number n for which we have 1 by n to be less than x minus y since this is positive. Okay, any positive number for some large value of n. This is less. We can always choose this natural number to be fairly large so that this becomes less than this and whenever this becomes less than this, this becomes less than this and so nx is greater than 1 plus ny. nx is greater than 1 plus ny. Okay. So, whenever we have x greater than y, whenever we have x greater than y, we have <coughs> nx, we have said that whenever x is greater than y, we must have x minus y. Let us repeat it x minus y greater than positive and we have some 1 by n which is less than this 1 by n is 
less than this okay x minus y is greater than n and we have n x to be greater than 1 plus n y if we transpose n x is greater than <coughs> 1 plus n y next we assume that <coughs> this n y is positive this n y is positive okay since y is any real number from Archimedean property, well, we have n y to be greater than 0. Not only that, not only that, we have some m, we have some m, which is another natural number. We have some m, which is another natural number this n y this n y lies between this this n y lies between this it may be equal to a minus 1 or may not be equal to a minus 1 but it is strictly less than at least some natural number m that is precisely due to Archimedes Archimedean property This is precisely due to Archimedean property. And from these two inequalities, one can easily <coughs> write that and obviously this is M. Okay. So from this we may easily write that this Nx and Ny, this Nx and Ny, this Nx and Ny. So from which we infer, from which we infer that if x is greater than y, we have m by n in between x and y, m by n in between x and y, okay. So this is a very important way to prove the density of r. Another very <coughs> important idea is the completeness property of R. The completeness property of R. Which states that if we have in bounded sequence of numbers any bounded sequence of numbers let us assume the simplest of the example 1 by n so since n is any natural number n is any natural number we can easily see that the values of xn is always less than 1 or equal to 1 and it is always strictly greater than 0. This is very important. This is very important. Because whenever you put this n starts from 1 and it does not end. It goes on. So whenever n is equal to 1, we have this and this is that is precisely the first value and the second value is half the third value is one third, second one is one fourth and so on. All these values are less than one. So this is the upper bound. All the values of xn is less or equal to one. And all the values of xn is positive since n is a natural number. So this is strictly greater than zero because no value of a natural number makes it zero. And that is why we say that this 0 is the lower bound. Isn't it so? 0 is the lower bound. And this 1 is the upper bound. We 
we say that this zero is the greatest lower bound. This is the greatest lower bound. But this one, it is not the least upper bound. Okay, because we are coming to this in the next video.